Hey, it's John and Mike, Brew-Dudes.com, and we had a request from one of our viewers to talk more about beer glasses. Glassware. Does it make a difference? Talk to us about beer glasses. Beer glasses. So we have a bunch of beer glasses. We're drinking uh, a Pilsner, a Bitburger Premium Pils, because from uh, Mike's uh, Pilsner uh, last week, uh, we decided to, what? drink a, a pilsner like an inspirational pilsner yeah okay. well i knew we were going to get some pilsner glasses so i wanted to at least drink one beer out of an appropriate styled glass for go. this video there you go because this would be a lot of beer to drink and we'd be doubling all these glasses well, should be wish we had like pilsner in all of these and see if there was any difference that's a separate video that's another video okay it's a we'll totally different we'll adventure. talk about those at the, that video at a later date yes <laughs> so stay tuned for that so Man, uh, man, I mean, a special beer for sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it certainly presents itself well in this glass. Uh, this is, uh, these, these two glasses are from my glass uh, collection. These were bought at a Crate and Barrel, so you know they know what they're talking about, right? They were listed as, as, as a Pilsner glasses, even though I looked online because our friend here, uh, Mike said, well, they look more like wheat glasses, like wheat beer glasses, yep. right? Um, but, you know, what is Crate, crate and Barrels like selling me some, a lie? What's I would say on? it's Pilsner, because the point of a Pilsner glass, it's it's got a, a, a linearly sloped side, normally a little bit narrower, but the point of a Pilsner glass is to keep it straight lines so you can really enjoy the clarity of the beer. Yeah. I mean, that's what, yeah. wow, you can see me in that. I can so, see right through the um, camera. Clear beer, what a novel idea. Yeah. Um, and the other <laughs> thing too is, you know, we've been we've sampled a little bit, so our foam has died down, but these glasses are oversized for the poor to also demonstrate a big foamy head. Exactly. That's the point of a Pilsner glass. All right, so right. take us through, now Let's we've talked go. a little bit about the Pilsner glass. Keep our palates wet. So you're saying on our left, to our right, we have a little bit of a story to talk about. Each yeah, a little bit. These we'll, glasses. We'll go through it quickly. Okay, so, so we'll start here. We'll keep What's it to about an hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> the history of these. No. Yeah. So, so this is the glass, right? This is your standard American pint glass, 16 ounces of beer, right? Yeah. Um, this is also called a shaker pint. Okay. Because the actual usage of this is to go into the shaker, right? So you'd mix, you know, mix your stuff. Put your stainless steel shaker on there and shake it, and mix it up, and you yeah. can strain into this glass. It's it's sort of like a it's a college kid's dr uh, cocktail glass is really what it is. <laughs> it's supposed to drink in a nice highball or something. That's you know what that is. But this is what 99% of all your beer comes in is yes. these, these glasses. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's um, you know it's straightforward. It's very versatile. They stack. That's why bars love them. Um, they're a little bit heavyweight, so the temperature flux is good. Yeah. And and that's what it is. But it is 16 ounces. So when you pay for 16 ounces and you get a little head on there, you're not actually getting 16 ounces of beer. Need a proper pint. Bring yourself into these two glasses, which are also ah. sort of in that English realm. So this is called uh, English tulip glass. Um, mine just happens to be have the Guinness logo on it, but it has a nice sloping uh, side to it. It's a little bit rounded, sort of like a tulip. And then this is the Nonic pint, which is dirty as all get out. This is the Nonic <laughs> pint, which has this, you know, extra bump on it here too, which is just to help. It helps with the little yes. when you're holding it. It's nice too. Nice. But these two beers are actually oversized. These are pints, but they're actually about um, coming in just under 20 ounces. And oh, the reason for that is you can still get your 16 ounce pour you and have your head, which is very important, have some nice foam on the beer too. Yeah. You know, like that too. Now all these glasses, these three glasses are great obviously for, you know, drinking stout, drinking American Amber, American Pale Ale. English um, ales. English sure. ales. These beers, being the volume that they are too, are really good for any of your session beers, right? Yep. You're going to drink pint after pint nice. of session beer and yep. really enjoy it. So we talked a little bit about pale ale. Let's move on to this weird glass. <laughs> I don't even know where this really comes from as far as an idea, but I, these sort of started coming onto the market 12, 15 years ago. But this glass has the has a you know most of its volumes up top. It's got this sort of semi ribbed handle handle to hold on to, but they call this an IPA glass. And the real thing is, whenever you see a glass that's sort of con concaving in on itself, it's trying to hold and focus aromas. So IPA being a very aromatic beer, that's what this is for. You really want to yeah. you know, get some of those aromas coming together in a, a tighter space so they're all coming together at your nose at the same time. Got it. Um, this is not quite 16 ounces, but um, 
who cares? It's a good good for pouring beer. And if you got to pour your bottle twice or off the keg a couple times with clean lines, you get excellent beer there. Excellent. So next class up, which is something that um, you know back in the early '90s when everybody was making wheat beers, <laughs> this is the glass. And I think nice. even. Um, uh, the Blue Moon commercials, you know, you, this is pretty that, prominent, yeah. right? So this, similar to a Pilsner glass, this one's a little bit more sexy. They actually refer to this as a, <laughs> as a wheat vase. It's got some nice curves to it. Again, it curves back in. Think about a wheat beer. Think about those mm. those uh, those esters and stuff like that. The pineapple, the bubble gum, stuff like that. Um, curving back in to sort of refocus it, and then you know, I think there's the slender appearance is just to help showcase, in this case, actually the haziness of yes. a good wheat beer, right? Yes. But again, it's oversized, it's tall like this, because wheat beer is even gonna be more foamy than uh, a Pilsen, right? So you get a nice, so you can really showcase a nice head of foam on there and have the, the beer underneath nice. it, and, and that's good too. So um, I like that glass, I use it a lot. You, these usually tend to, have, this one's like, almost, it's like crystal, it's like really thin, yeah. but sometimes they're, they're much heavier, which again, helps with, um, a little bit of temperature control too. Sure. Like it sort of holds the, the cool. I don't like bit. glasses this thin. I would break these. I'm terrified. I've got a I've got a several <laughs> different styles of glass that's that thin. It's these is these are um, Spiegelau glasses. They're actually from a, like German blown glass. Mm. My wife got me a set of these. This is one of those too. Yep. Um, it's nice, but I keep thinking it's going to break in the dishwasher. <laughs> but, so. Yes. I'm always, I'm surprised you even or when touch I, it. Because with this to try to get into it and clean it, it's like forget it. It's, yeah. yeah, it's a nightmare. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So all right. All right. Moving forward Love into it. some cool, somewhat sort of stemmed glassware. So this is a classic tulip, right? And I love these beers for. These glasses are really meant for your imperial stout, a mm. big Baltic porter, barley wine, mm. um, anything that's really going to be where you, you're going to really want to pour yourself six ounces, maybe eight ounces and still have room for, for foam. Um, this is a sipping beer glass. I tend to like sort of cup the, the foot of it in my hand and I still hold it like this. But if you didn't want to heat it up, you know, you can hold it like this. It's sort of like a snifter. Yeah. And you know, I have put bourbon in here and yeah. done it this way yeah, yeah. just to, you know, feel like I'm looking kind of hip. Um, so, <laughs> but I hard. love this in particular. I love the roundness of it. Um, this one's got a little bit of, you know, the glass has got a little bit of a, of a lip there so that as you're drinking it, supposedly, you, know, you get a little bit of a turbulence in the beer. Mm. And with a beer that's bigger in alcohol, you're drinking a smaller volume of it. You want all the help you can get to really enjoy it. And, and I think that's what that is. This beer, this, this glass <laughs> is um, a taller version of this in a yeah. sense. You could call this a chalice. It's not necessarily a goblet. A, I don't have a goblet, but a goblet would be bigger and wider. You see like doubles and mm. uh, 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 dark Belgian strong ales in goblets a lot. Um, big open, so you, all that aroma is just right there at the surface. Um, super malty beers in those. This beer, I love this beer for, well, sour beer specifically, especially really? fruited sour beer. Mm. I just find there's a little bit of elegance to it and I don't want a big pour sometimes of the sour right. beer. So uh, having a sour beer in a glass like, glass like this is great. Super floral IPAs are awesome in a glass like this. You know, again, it's focusing aroma, but it does flare out. So it's like coming in and sort of trying to give you like a place to get your nose and really enjoy the beer too. And this one has a little bit of a lip to it too yeah. as well. See, I always find the beer glasses that have the stem mm -hmm. That they are for styles that you don't want to warm with your hand. Yeah. You know? And so would you feel like that the application of, of putting a sour beer in that to hold on to it here in the stem, not yeah. to warm it up. Yeah. That's that's a good thing. That's something that's, yeah. that's like a feature. I think from I think for me too, in a glass like this, uh, I want it in a glass like this too, so I can look I can look swirl. at the color and yeah. enjoy it. So if you get like um uh, like a, a cerise, right? Something that's got like a, a purple colored beer, mm. you wanna, when you take those first few sips and you're going, oh my gosh, it's amazing. <laughs> then you wanna take that and look at it yeah. up in the light like that and enjoy the, the cool colors of yeah. some of those fruited sours. Right. That's just me, no. but, and we'll, we'll get to that. Well, but, but the stem allows you to look it up and that, look yeah. it up in the light. Exactly. Now, if you don't have one of these, there's, there's, there is no shame whatsoever in using a traditional wine glass. 
I like a, for me specifically, white wine glasses I think are excellent for those types of beers. Uh, Belgian triple, golden strong ales, mm -hmm. things like that. Again, it's a smaller volume, yep. you know, so uh, for big, bigger alcohol beers, um, you know, I, I praise the dudes who are drinking, you know, 8%, 12% barley wines out of glasses like this. <laughs> Good on you, but that's not for me. Um, so then we'll, we'll skip that guy real quick. But of course, here's your classic mug, mug. right? A, yeah. a good beer mug. Um, I, I like a good beer mug. This one even says Oktoberfest on it. It was from a company outing. Um, it has says, says half liter on there. You can just barely see it. It's actually etched in the glass. Huh. Um, these are fun because now you got a handle, right? So it's not getting cold. Normally, too, a mug like this would be bigger. Yes. Like this is half liter, but like a liter. When you've got that much beer, you don't want to warm it up with your hands, right? So this is excellent, obviously, for Oktoberfest, Marts, and uh, even, you know, pills and stuff like that. Just this, to me, a mug is like a lager drinking glass, um, and you can hold on to it and not let it warm up in your yeah. hand. Um, that's really great um, for that and, one. And uh, I'm sure if you have started a home brewing hobby and uh, your friends and family have picked up on that fact, that you have probably gotten as yeah. a present many beer mugs because that's what people say to themselves like what should i buy so and so for their birthday or for mugs. <laughs> you get mugs. Yeah. christmas or what have you yeah. beer mugs and then suddenly you have a cabinet full of beer mugs if you're like me because i have yeah I've many got, different yeah. versions of that yeah. exact glass this is a reason to brew Oktoberfest, yes. Munich Dunkel, right? That's the reason. Um, when, when you finally have like 12 of these, that's the time to have an Oktoberfest at your house. Mm. People will come over, they'll be really excited to have a mug of beer, and it's yes. just great. That's great. Um, then let's see. Uh, this is the last beer. So, this, so these are just standard beer glasses, and most people are going to recognize this glass in my hand. But there's also a whole range of, beer, of glasses that's just basically called specialty or custom beer glasses. Belgium is littered with mm. specialty glass for every single beer that's out there. Mm. This just happens to be one that everyone's familiar with. This is the Sam Adams glass that was developed probably 15 years ago now that they put all their research into to make sure. Sam Adams taste as great as it could possibly be. Um, features of this glass, again, it's got a big bulb here to hold the volume and showcase head of the beer. It's got a thick lip here um, to help with turbulence as you drink it, uh, giving you more aroma in your mouth. Um, it flares out for easy drinking. Um, the shape of it is, is meant to be held. It's got, you can put a firm grip on there as you get a little <laughs> bit uh, tipsy. And the other thing too, in the bottom of this glass, and I'm seeing, you see this in more and more glasses now too, there's actually a laser etching in the bottom of the glass, which serves as a nucleation site. Yes. And so when you have a beer in this glass, it bubbles a lot more than what's happening in this glass. Right. And the reason for that is to continue to evolve aroma, mm -hmm. right? When I have a, gla a beer like this and I've been drinking it, we've been talking, um, and I just want to get another sniff of the aroma. I mean, you can go back to any video where we're tasting beer. You know, you want to swirl that sucker up again to get a little bit more foam. And when you get foam, you're getting aroma. So um, that's the deal. Wow. Um, so two last things I guess I'd mention is, uh, for me, like glass etiquette, right? Glassware etiquette. I always like to rinse the glasses uh, before I use them, just because there's any dust in there. Yeah, Because sure. certain glasses, like a glass like this, storing it upside down, all the weight's up here now, and it, it's a little top heavy, a little bit scary. This glass, forget storing it upside down. <laughs> um, this one, I'm just afraid. It's the only one I have, nope. I love it. So um, I just like to rinse them, get any dust out of them, sure. stuff like that. The other thing too is, especially if you have got a ton of these, um, I can't stand it when people freeze glasses. Oh no. Because what, Yes. The, Don't do that. the ice in your freezer, the, your freezer is just full of bad odors, mm -hmm. and it gets into the frost of the mug, and then the beer picks up on that too. Like, you know, if I go to someone's house and they give me a pint glass that's frost and they pour the beer in, I'm like, oh, thanks. And they just sort of, either you pound it down and they think you're a hero or you just sort of sip on it all day and they think you're a wimp. But you're losing either way when people frost your glasses. <laughs> Don't frost my glass. Um, so so yeah. that's that, you know. Uh, so keep your glasses clean. They say don't put them in the dishwasher with dishwashing detergent. I mean, I do that because, uh, you know, I, I can't hand wash glasses all the time, right? But that's why I like to rinse them. Yes. Rinse them with hot water if possible, too. Yeah. It helps get the residual detergent out of the gotcha. glass. So, Well, I think this is, you know, <laughs> not exactly, you know, a thorough examination of all the glasses No, we definitely have a, a handful of styles missing. But. Sure, sure, but it's a, a good start. And I think that really it was, it was based on user feedback where they wanted us to talk more about glass styles and just 
do kind of an array of well, glasses that we yeah. own <laughs> and talk about them and, and the different uses for each. Yep. I think that it would be interesting to do a follow-up video where we take one beer style, we pour them, like you said, across yep. you know multiple different um, glass styles and see if we can perceive yep. differences. Of course, yep. we you know taste with our eyes as much you know as we taste with our 100 percent tongue and that's why for me too and that was something i was going to add is that you know do the glasses make a difference i think the glass makes a difference but not in the sense that there's actually something biochemical biophysical going on i think it's all placebo i think I, it's not all placebo i don't want to get we're going to get tons of comments now but for me if i just want to have one beer yeah and I want to just have a special moment to myself sure. with a beer. Grabbing a special glass versus just a pint glass, it elevates the experience, the whole experience, sure. and that's part of it. Like, how many times have you had a, a meal or a beer somewhere that was transcendent, but it was because it was like with a, a friend you hadn't seen in a long time, or was that a brewery you've always yeah. wanted to go to and never made to? Or you you finally go over to Belgium and you're like, oh my gosh, this West Mile is amazing. But it's the same <laughs> beer you could get, right? Yeah. It has to do with like time, place, everything. Yes. It, it, it has to do something. So, you know, drinking a nice beer out of something like drinking a mediocre beer out of a glass like this can make it a better experience. See, you know I always I mean? think to myself, like, I get, get the proper glassware or a special uh, glassware, and I hope that beer. It's going to be great. Yes. Yeah, I hope yeah. that the beer actually follows through with yeah. the promise of everything <laughs> yeah. I've set up for yeah. it. And uh, I would say, I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 I'm always I think a you, pessimist. You, you gotta, yeah, you got to balance myself. the beer with it's the, you know, whatever. Out. So Right. All right. So hopefully this was an interesting look through different glass types. I think really the, the next step is to taste uh, the same beer in different glasses to see if that really makes a difference. I mean, again, we're, we're talking about places and times and things like that. That also affects your perception of it. But uh, it would be interesting to see like, hey, out of this, you know, would it taste the same as out of this or something? I think it's a fun exercise to taste any, use, always use that as the base yep. and then do the other glasses yeah. in comparison. Absolutely. And of course, this is something you can try at home for sure, you know, with your own friends and family, especially if they've given you beer mugs for the past five years because they don't know what else to give you for yep. gifts. All right. So if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. We appreciate all of your feedback. And if you like this kind of content, subscribe to our channel because we put up something like this every single week. For John and Mike, brewdashnews.com. Brew on. Cheers.